My parents run the Bhagavarapu Foundation, which supports kids going through secondary education and college and master programs when they won't be able to afford it by themselves. Um, and they've seen like the benefits of what education can do for kids, especially in impoverished areas. So um, it's a big part of the organization. My grandmother, she's a teacher her whole life. Um, when she retired, she still wanted to teach really. So she just kept teaching in orphanages. Um, like she'd take money out of her own pocket if like they ran out of food. The base of this was like my grandmother just never believed that children should like have to like focus on like health or education. It should always be standard. So when she passed, she just kind of wanted to extend the outreach of the organization to see like what else we could do or if we could work with other organizations. Um, so after she passed, I spent like the year after that um, organizing and allocating resources here. Um, we partnered up with Uplift a Child, which is another organization up here in New Jersey um, with national outreach, uh, as well as uh, Iglesia La Merced, which is a church network in Colombia. We got close to 7,000 pounds of medical resources um, and educational supplies here. So all in all, I think federal funding wise, we secured a little north of 70,000 US dollars. And uh, I think private grants were just shy of 20,000. But really this was just kind of to test to see what, what it was possible. I went to Columbia between July 2nd and August 2nd. So just a full month. First two weeks, we had two drivers, two trucks, so two full trailers. Uh, one was medical supplies, so broad range antibiotics, malarial nets. Um, we had prenatal care, yellow fever, and a couple other bigger diseases. That was the medical part of it, and the supplies were just more school uniforms, textbooks, um, lab equipment, and stuff like that, um, as well as some diagnostic equipment so uh, more isolated places could determine and diagnose illnesses easier and quicker. Um, so that was the second truck. Um, covered around 600 miles, um, five stops, and then seven more smaller stops where we had to bring resources even farther into villages and towns where they didn't have resources to come to distribution locations to get it. The, we took four days to take one of the trucks to La Guajira. It's a big desert in the north. Um, it takes about three days. There's no roads. Um, that that portion of the trip was probably the most difficult portion, just logistically, because we were taking trucks on roads that haven't seen large trucks or double axle trucks in like a decade. Um, also, it's a desert, so we were bringing in like all the water, all the food that we needed for four days with us. Um, I did a lot of like backpacking, developing countries beforehand, so I've like been around poverty and seen it, but I've never seen like the human conditions so poor. So all the water is brought in by government trucks twice a week, and then they make it between those deliveries by begging. So we would give water or food, but then some roadblocks we just have to drive through because we didn't have anything. And, like it's, it's tough, but it's really nice when we got there to be able to deliver aid, to be able to see like the impact we're giving to these kids is, was huge. Uh, my grandmother always said like, nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. Um, that's like what, like, that's like the last thing she said to me. So basically what I've been riding with like this whole time.